All right, this is my next one. Um, says this. It seems that uh, families today are stressed out, strung out of time, <laughs> less of what used to be called a traditional family who gathers together for dinner time and all those types of things. What advice would you give to wives who see this in their family, but they're not sure what to do about it? Your turn. You go all right. first. Um, I think the traditional values, I think it sounds great. It looks great. You know, I see the old shows, Leave it to, what is it, Leave it to Beaver, mm -hmm. all those things. But I, um, you know, I don't know that those things are going to save us. And so, um, you know, whether or not you sit down with your kids at a, your dinner table um, and you dishonor the Lord, it's going to be, it's going to be death. Mm -hmm. And so anything that doesn't have the values of Scripture and really going to the word, you know, looking at somebody else and feeling like you said, a wife that feels like she should, want, she should do those things. Um, I wouldn't feel guilted by the appearance of things. I would just look at what the word of God says, really learn the word of God and read the word of God. What does it really truly say about your family? And, um, you know, I always hold to Deuteronomy 6. <laughs> um, it talks about, uh, I just saw you opening yeah, it. I was going to read it, so go yeah. ahead, please. Okay. Um, uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them on the, tor the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Yes, and so that is one of the main passages that I look to mm -hmm. when I think about traditional yeah. biblical values, you yeah. know, teaching my kids. And so today when I woke up, uh, after I spent time with the Lord, I sat down with both of my kids. I talked to them about the Holy Spirit in a very natural way. We sat and we prayed for the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. I encouraged my kids that they can do things to be bold. That would be a value in our home. Um, you know, the whole idea of sitting down at the dinner table, I see the value in just pausing and having that relationship with your kids. And so however you get that, mm -hmm. um, whether it's at the dinner table or you know in the morning over coffee, whatever it is. Um, and then I would just say that the other thing would be um, don't look at how other people do it, but pray for the Lord to tell you how you should do it and sit with your husband and ask your husband, what do we um, need to incorporate into our family? Because mm -hmm. I can look at Marcy and say, oh, I feel guilt that I'm not doing what Marcy's mm -hmm. doing or what they did on the show or, you know, even to the point of, you know, traditional values would say I should be in a dress mm -hmm. and I should have been in a dress at like 7 a.m. Well, when I did Bible study with my kids, I was sitting there in my sweats. Mm -hmm. And I think that it doesn't have to look picture perfect. It just needs to be biblical. And so I can have an outward appearance that looks good and be totally dishonoring to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that was the one thing. Um, Zach and I did junior high ministry for 10 years here at Calvary. And I was shocked. I, I just had no idea that Christians disobeyed the Lord. And those young kids would come in at discipleship and we'd sit down and we'd pray. And these kids whose parents were you know, really, truly, in my mind, leadership. They would tell me things that their parents had done or said, and I was just shocked. And these kids were talking about how it really influenced their walk when their mom was at home trashing their Sunday school teacher or their mom's mouth just ran about their school teacher. Or, you know, they would come, one of them came and told me, my mom said this about you. And I know that she would be horrified if her daughter ever um, told her she told me, but it's just the lack of biblical truth in the home. Don't bring your kids to church and then live a different way in your home. Right. Just be who you are and be godly all day, every day, and when you're not, just repent. Yep. And so That's that would be... That's part of godliness, right? Yes. Repentance is yes. part of godliness. Yes. A righteous man falls mm -hmm. seven times, but he gets up. And so righteousness is not perfection yep. in those views what I think what traditional values but righteousness is being real and being repentant and that's what I want for me and my family and so and with my husband's leading and so yeah. that's the we eat dinner you know we do we try uh like four nights a week where I make effort to cook the meal we sit down and I have to encourage my husband I try to encourage him like okay remember like mm -hmm. draw the kids to the table make sure we see and he's like okay okay and then he come on everyone so he we all we communicate about it and I don't try to make it look like what everyone else is doing i do what works for us so. i like that you said that about what everybody else is doing i was thinking about something last week uh at, based on romans 12 1 where it says we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice holy you know that whole passage and one of the things the lord said that happens to us women is we compare ourselves with the other sacrificial lambs nope i'm supposed to die on that altar yeah. and when i rise up as a living sacrifice then god gets to tell me what to do mm -hmm. And he gets to do that with my husband. And he gets to do that with my children and my family. So whatever works, 
uh, should come from Father God. You and your husband uh, sitting, praying about it, thinking about it, talking about it, and then just come to some, you know, some agreements. But really, this passage in Deuteronomy is just formal and informal tre- teaching. So you can talk to your God. I, I mean, I had the best conversations with my daughters in the car on the way to, to soccer practice or in the car on the way to the grocery store or at the grocery store or, or when we would go down to church and clean once a week. So it, it, does, it doesn't have to be sit at the dinner table, have three square meals a day um, and that kind of thing, unless you're sensing that's what God wants you and your husband to do. And if he does, then God's going to give you the ability to do it. But you do it because he asks you to, not because you're comparing yourself to your friend. And sometimes I think we feel guilty too. We just feel guilty for no reason. Satan, Satan just wants us to feel guilty and get us all stirred up about something. And then we got our eyes off of God and onto ourselves and onto our circumstances. And so um, if you're sensing that you want to have dinner every night, well, talk to your husband about it. Pray about it. Maybe you can. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that unless, you know, unless you have to work or something. I don't know. I do think when you're talking about feeling rushed and feeling busy and feeling stressed, that's a huge red flag in our spirit and our soul. Like if you don't have time to do the things God's called you to do, then you don't have time to do that thing. And so what has God called you to do? And that's where I sit in a spot where before I commit to anything, what has the Lord called me to do? Mm -hmm. I know the basics of my day in in the parameters of what God's yeah. called me to do. And so um, I was just talking to someone on uh, Saturday and they were saying, well, I know that God wants me to slow down, but so-and-so asked me to do this thing. And I was like, pause. God is the ultimate authority. He's asked you to slow down. So you can't even yeah. consider that thing. Right. If God's told you, if you know, and I even mark it down, you know. So if you feel guilt that you haven't looked your kids in the eyes this week and talked to them, then you probably need to slow down. If you haven't, you know, been able to do anything but rush your kids from the car to the next event to the next event and you feel like you're missing out, that is your spirit. And I wouldn't ignore those things. Don't look at what Marcy's allowed to do and say, well, she takes her kids to three sporting events and she does this. Like, God has different things for each of us. That's right. You know, Marcy always uses Mm -hmm. Psalm 123. Yeah. uh, Yeah. As a maidservant looks to the hand of her mistress. mistress. Our eyes look to you, O Lord. Yep. And so we look to God for Mm -hmm. our commands. We look to God for our direction. And um, I would encourage all of us, you know, you get, for people with kids, I get 18 years to form them. And if I give over that time to everybody else all the time for every little thing, I'm going to miss out. And I have been called to be their mother. I have been called to put that first um, before the events at church and before the outward um, activities that I want to do. And so, you know, um, there are some real commands too Mm -hmm. about traditional values about cleaning your home too. You know, we look at people who clean their house. Um, I was just I was just talking to somebody and they kind of made a joke that um, people who have clean houses live in a museum, but they actually live in a house that's lived in. Um, and it just offended me because my house is my house is clean because my husband likes a clean house. I know Marcy's house is clean. Um, I did that today. That's your traditional <laughs> value. Um, right. And so I just encourage you to read Titus. Yeah, Titus says you know, it right there. He says mm-hmm. we're to be pure workers at home. Yeah, right. workers in our home. And so whatever that looks like to you, and it doesn't need to look like my house or Matt's house or Marcy's, but there are values there that you should find in scripture and you should pray over them and figure out what God has for you. Because I want to teach my kids to leave things better than they found it. That's a biblical principle. I want to teach my kids that everything they have is a gift from God and they are not, you know, they're not to destroy things. They're not to just take everything for granted. So um, whatever that is for you, pray for it. That's your traditional value, I think, is a biblical value. Yeah. You're to take care of your things. You teach your kids to be um, good stewards of what God's given them. And we're to be good homemakers. I don't know that we're allowed to just ignore that passage because everyone else does. So yeah, we're not, I don't think Because we we're too busy. I mean, I'm too busy, to cl- I'm too busy to cook dinner. I'm too busy to clean. I'm too busy. So ask your husband what he wants and give him an opportunity to answer in honesty without that fear that you're going to retaliate in anger. Do you want me to cook meals at home? I bet he would say yes. Right. You know. And if there's something that he has already put on your plate to do, like maybe he approved that the kids have soccer practice or whatever, soccer or whatever, then talk to him about it. Say, well, I really want to have dinner on the table, but, you know, we've got soccer practice from 4 to 530. Is it okay then if I, you know, and there, there's ways that you can work around this. There's ways that you can do things. But if you're continually putting things on your plate, and we women are, I think we women are notorious for that. We don't really want to be at home. Um, we listen to the world and what they say about our job at home uh, or we listen to the enemy or our own feelings about our job at home 
And what I mean by that is, well, this is just a mundane old job. It doesn't mean anything. You know, anybody can clean the house, those kind of things, that those lies that we believe. Um, and because you're believing those lies, you're going out and doing all kinds of stuff, then just stop. Just take a deep breath and stop. And like Christy said, pray, ask the Lord. So again, your life is his living sacrifice. Don't, you don't gauge it by what my living sacrifice life is, looks like. It's different for me. Right. And, um, I was, um, I have always had the opinion and the idea, and I believe it is biblical, um, that if my husband allows, if, if I'm allowed and able and blessed to be able to be able to stay at home and not have to work full time, then I'm going to work as hard as my husband is. That's just the way I look at it. I'm not going to be sitting on the couch watching HGTV when he's at work. Now, can I sit down and watch HGTV when I have my sandwich for my lunch and maybe a 10 minute break? Of course, but I'm not going to just sit on the couch all day. <laughs> That's, I mean, you know, he's not sitting on the couch all day. I just, I just feel like that, that's so selfish. And not only that, but I think it's, un, it's undermining our husband's um, position in our home too, because again, he's providing for you to have that home, to have that food, to have that electricity, to have that couch you're sitting on that TV to watch. Yeah. If he's out working to make the money to do that, then you do your part at home. And I don't know. I just think we're so busy in this life doing things that don't really matter yeah. in the long run. So again, I'm not saying that you can't do those things. It's just the way I look at them. I just, my girls, I'm just like, you know, I said, the, told the girls, what do you want to be when you grow up? They always wanted to be wives and moms. Okay, so I'm not going to have them go to soccer practice if they don't want to yeah. or do these other ec extracurricular things, extracurricular things. So guess what? I taught them how to bake. I taught them how to cook. I taught them how to do the things that they needed to do because they always wanted to be a wife and a mom. I did, ho I did daycare to help earn a little bit of extra money and stay home. I had them help me so I could teach them and train them. So again, don't gauge your life or, you know, do what I do. You just have to, I, I just knew I was supposed to do that because these, Mitch and I talked about it and we prayed about it and we just did it. So I guess that's the quantifier, right? No, yeah. What and we're both saying. The talk other to the Lord. traditional value though, I think that's missed too, is um, the slowness in the sense that mm -hmm. like, we don't have to have everything. No. Um, we don't need everything. We don't, our kids don't need everything. They're not going to be happier and healthier if they have 5,000 toys or if they have 100 toys or right. have five toys. And I think we can see that based mm -hmm. upon other cultures. The kids are happy yeah. if you show them love and discipline and structure. Right. Um, I was, Zach and I were just joking because he, we were budgeting. Uh, I don't work very many hours. I don't want to work very many hours. And every time um, I work, it's when my kids come here. So it's mm -hmm. just, it's got to be minimal. And we made a joke. Somebody made a joke at us because Zach and I were budgeting not buying a certain thing for our house. We stopped buying a certain drink or whatever. Yeah. And they were like, why wouldn't you buy that? You're a grown adult. Like, mm -hmm. if I want something, I get it now. And Zach came home and told me this. And he was like, this person said they're going to buy me this thing. And I was like, but, they're, but they work full time and they don't want to work full time. They've told us, like, they wish their wife didn't have to work full time. And it was one of those things where Zach was able to go to him and be like, you understand that by not budgeting at all, you put yourself in a position to always be striving for more and more and more. And it really is a mentality of all of us. We all deserve everything. We should all have nice right. houses and nice cars. So I just encourage anybody who's struggling with this fast pace, needed to get everything done and do all these things on all these side hustles. Do yeah. you really need it? Yeah. What would be more beneficial? And right. do your kids obey? Do your kids hear the word of God? Do you spend time with the Lord? And are you nice to your husband? Because if you can't be nice to your husband, you probably should slow down. Like or, for me, yes. if I'm busy, 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 and my husband walks in, I'm like crazy. Yeah. So, or I guess, are you too tired for you later on after the kids yeah. go to bed? Be the most and fun. Really, yeah, no, be should. the most fun. I'm sorry, but we do. We women go, 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 go. And, um, you know, yeah. some days are going to be like that. There's going to yeah. be times where kids are sick and there's going to be added stuff. But um, I just think that just sitting down with a, a piece of paper, writing a list of everything that you now do, um, everything that you would like to see changed and then hold it up to God and just take one, the, take the very first thing and ask him about it. And then of course, because you're married, I, I, if you're married, um, then talk to your husband. If you're not married, well, your husband just told you God, right? Yeah. I was just going to say that, uh, if you think that you're supposed to be doing more spiritual things, write down where you spend your time. Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, I, I go through this routinely on my iPhone where it shows how much time I'm spending <laughs> on everything. Yep. It's like, okay, well, if you're supposed to be spending time with the Lord and you have five hours of Netflix that week, it's like, yep. there's your window. Thank you. That's not rocket yeah. science. You can just yeah. immediately roll that over. And uh, I think I was thinking of uh, studying for tonight letter, letters to the seven churches and uh, Le Laodicea spe specifically. That can be translated um, Laos people, 
the sia or dica or whatever the greek word is is opinions or judge whatever and so when you're talking about comparing yourselves amongst yourselves is not wise if you're in the church of laodicea where god has nothing good to say about and their struggle is we think we're good we're rich we don't have a need of anything all these things yeah it's like you could make yourself look pretty spiritual and good mm-hmm. yeah. but what lord has to say about you is that you're right. poor blind and naked and so yeah. don't listen or watch even in our church calvary and i love our church that's why yeah. i'm here it's why i work here i think it's doctrinally correct i mean obviously yes i'm invested in in calvary chapel tri cities but to compare myself with the people around here instead of what god wants me to do with my wife with my wife, with my life, mm-hmm. and my wife, yep. is short-circuiting God's will for me in many different areas. And so don't get caught in, into that, and especially on these topics with your family and yeah. and all those types of things. Well, and I think, stay. and I, I, you didn't mention it, whoever asked this question didn't mention it, but I'm going to all mention it. Stay away from social media. Stop reading books. You know, I mean, if you, if you have a hard time uh, feeling guilty, about everything that you read or, or, or watch on YouTube or whatever about family, parenting, home, then just stay away from it for a while. I, I had to do that. I had to just cut myself off from books and all kinds of stuff. I like that passage in Ecclesiastes where it says, when with the study of much books, it's wearisome. <laughs> and again, books are okay. I'm not saying that. Um, it's just that I was constantly buying the next book, how to be a godly wife, buying the, how to be a godly mom, how to do this, how to do that. Instead of just starting with God, how do you want me to do it? And then asking Mitch, how do you want me to do it? And this is what I have found. God totally, totally blesses me with joy and peace and strength and the abilities when I do it that way. When it's God and then Mitch says, yeah, go do that. It's just, it's amazing. And the guilt goes away when I have to say no to a friend because I'm sorry today's laundry day, right? Um, it, It just, it's amazing.